So in the final section uh, of Unit 3, I want to talk a little bit more about the valence electrons. The way that we have been drawing the valence electrons in the previous sections has been to draw an atom with the number of protons in it, the number of neutrons, if we knew that information, and then we would draw a circle for each shell and then we would fill in the, the appropriate number of electrons for each shell. Um, that is, ho hopefully you have an appreciation that that is a little bit of a pain to do over and over again. So to, to basically emphasize that, drawing the valence electrons and drawing all of the electrons in these atoms it becomes a pain if you have to do it over and over again. So what has happened over the years is that uh, people have come up with easier ways of drawing valence electrons. And about a hundred years ago, someone named Gilbert Lewis essentially invented a, a different way of drawing valence electrons. What he invented was something called electron dot symbols, which I would like to go over now. Uh, what Lewis did was he developed a simpler way of showing valence electrons. The way that you do it is you draw the symbol of the atom, and then you put dots around the symbol of the atom only for the valence electrons. So as an example, if you had a hydrogen atom and it had only one valence electron, you would draw the symbol for hydrogen, which is the capital letter H, and then you would just put one dot next to it. That is a relatively simple example. If you had a helium atom and it, the helium atom had two electrons, you would draw the symbol for helium, and then you would draw two dots uh, next to the helium atom. If you um, these are oftentimes also known as Lewis structures. And I don't want you to get too deeply involved in this. I just want you to recognize that when you see the, the symbol of an atom and dots around it, basically those dots are representing the number of valence electrons that that particular atom has. And on the next slide, I have a, a few additional examples. So here is a Lewis structure for an oxygen atom. In this case, this oxygen atom has one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. Um, here's a carbon atom. It has four valence electrons. This sodium atom has one. And, and you can basically just look at them and count the number of valence electrons. So the idea here is that you don't have to draw the electrons in the inner shells. You only draw the electrons in the outermost shells. And it becomes a little bit easier to draw. So um, if you see this type of information, you should know uh, basically what it means. It means that you're looking at the number of electrons in the outermost shell. And then, so, so that's pretty much it for Lewis structures. The only other thing that I'd like to point out is that often if you have more than five valence electrons, a lot of times what you'll do is you'll put the, uh, you'll put the electrons in pairs. So here, this chlorine atom has, uh, has seven valence electrons and six of those electrons are shown in pairs. Here are two here are another two as a pair, here are another two as a pair, and then there's a lone electron over here. The oxygen over here has six valence electrons, and two sets of the electrons are shown in pairs, and then two are shown alone. So I don't want to get too uh, deeply involved in why that is, but just take it uh, on faith that sometimes the electrons are drawn as pairs, sometimes they're drawn as alone. So we're at the end of Unit 3. I just want to summarize uh, some of the information that we've gone over. There are 118 different types of atoms, 118 different types of elements. They are typically arranged based on uh, the fact that they are uh, certain elements are similar to other elements. And that is typically shown using the periodic table, which I showed you in varying amounts of detail throughout this unit. Um, you can break down the atom into smaller and smaller pieces. So the atom can be made of protons, electrons, and neutrons. And I want you to know the different features of protons, electrons, and neutrons. So protons have a positive electrical charge. Electrons have a negative electrical charge. Neutrons have no electrical charge. I want you to know these types of pieces of information. I want you to know what atomic number is. That's the number of protons that an atom has. Atomic mass is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. I want you to know how to figure out the electrical charge of an atom. That's the number of protons minus the number of electrons. I want you to understand that atoms have uh, certain preferred electrical charges a lot of the time. So certain atoms prefer to have a certain type of electrical charge. It could be positive, it could be negative, it could be neutral. It depends on the atom, and it depends on the rules that we discussed in a number of sections in this unit. 
And then finally, I want you to have an appreciation for what the purpose of electron dot symbols are for. And that is the end of Unit 3. I will, uh, you will hear from me in the beginning of Unit 4 next.